We have both teams now and the first South Africa Ireland test is almost upon us. My name is Mark, let's talk rugby. Okay, so in this video, we're obviously going to preview the game. We're going to go, first of all, quickly through each of the teams, then come back and have a look a bit more in depth at individual players or combinations within the teams. And then finally, just talk generally about the game and give a prediction. So we're going to start with the home team, South Africa. So front row is Oxenche, Bongi and Banambi and Franz Malherba. Second row, Eben Etzebet and Franco Mostart. Back row, Sia Khaleesi, Peter Steph de Toy and Quagga Smith. Halfbacks, Faf de Klerk and Andre Pollard. The left wing is Kurt Lee Centres, Damon D'Alende and Jesse Creel. Right wing, Cheson Colby and fullback is Willie LaRue. Then on the bench, we've got Malcolm Marks, Gerhard Steenkamp, Vincent Cock, Samuel Morat, Orgy Sneeman, Marco Van Staden, Grant Williams and Sasha Feinberg and Gon Mazulu. Okay, so that is the South Africa 23. Now let's have a look at the Irish team. So obviously, you know, uh, they couldn't be given the same way around. So Ireland go from fullback, uh, you know, basically opposite of what the South African team was. So fullback is Jamie Osborne, right wing Calvin Nash, centres Robbie Henshaw and Bunyaki, left wing James Lowe, halfbacks Craig Casey and, and Jack Crowley. Back row then is Caelan Doris, Josh van der Fleer and Peter Manny. Second row, Tyg Byrne and Joe McCarthy. Front row then Tyg Furlong, Dan Sheen and Andrew Porter. On the bench, they have Ronan Kelleher, Keen Healy, Finley Bealham, James Ryan, Ryan Baird, Connor Murray, Kieran Frawley and Gary Ringrose. So South Africa have gone for a 6-2 split and Ireland have gone for a 5-3 split on the benches. Okay, so... Let's have a closer look at the South African side. So the first thing to say is that, you know, it's it's amazing. It's a really strong team that they picked. And it's almost it's almost difficult, I think, for South Africa, even when they have to go to depth to pick a poor team. There's just so many good players, you know, within South Africa and outside South Africa as well. I think eight of the players in this 23, if we counted correctly, are playing in Japan, including um who is it? Uh, somebody's playing in Saitama. Yeah, Damien Delende is, is playing for Saitama Wild Rights, which would have been my local team when I lived in Japan because I lived in Saitama. Uh, so I never got to go see them. But, you know, if I had been there uh, or if I, if I lived there now, I probably would go along maybe once or twice just to check it out. Like s Japanese league standard is not very good. You, you've basically got like uh, amazing players and then very poor <laughs> players all all kind of playing in the one league because it's basically run by companies you know it's not really a professional league it's uh more that like it's it's almost a play thing for the executives of the company so uh although it is getting better obviously and you can see the standard players are over there but um of this team this starting team of the 15, uh, it's, uh, yeah, 12 of them started the Rugby World Cup final against New Zealand, obviously where uh, South Africa won and are world champions. And then uh, the other three who didn't start, Oxen J, uh, Quagga Smith and Willie Daru came off the bench in that game as well. So basically 15 World Cup winners in the starting 15 there. And then um, on the bench, they've got one more in Orgy Stamen. And then the rest of the bench then um, didn't feature in the World Cup final, but they're still quality, quality players. You know, uh, some of them they would have liked to have available for that Rugby World Cup final as well. Um, so let's start with the front row. So you've got two Sharks in there, Oxen Chay and bon Bongi and Brambi, and Franz Malherber from the Stormers as well. So, you know, that is a, you know, a really good front row and every time every time South Africa pick a front row you know uh, to start and on the bench you look at them in, and there's there's very little between their, their starting front rows and, and the guys coming off the bench and I think that, you know over any other team in the world I think that's what they have because even when you think of that like that you know they're, they're missing the likes of Stephen Kitsoff from uh, and Dion Free as well from the Rugby World Cup final but 
you know, you're going to have people like Malcolm Mark, Gerhard Steenkamp and Vincent Koch who said a great um, season for the Sharks and Steenkamp as well for the Bulls um, has, has had a, you know, a brilliant season too. So, you know, there's not going to be much drop off when, when they bring on that bench. I think that's why you, we're probably going to see South Africa going to, to their, to their bench for the front row a lot earlier than Ireland. Um, for whatever reason, um, Leinster, certainly in in recent games have been keeping Porter on there for ages even though they have um Healy on the bench so will Ireland do the same thing because Porter was playing like 70 odd minutes or something um in some of the games so but I think South Africa will have no issues with having to go to that bench and wanting to go to that bench earlier I think getting that you know tell the guys at halftime you got five more minutes get out there empty the tank and then bring on the replacement front row and just continue steamrolling. I think it's going to be the plan for them. But yeah, it's really impressive front row and replacements there for them. Uh, then the second row, we got uh, Evan Etzebed, another member of the Sharks team that obviously won the Challenge Cup this year. And, you know, that's going to be, you know, because in the ORC, obviously the Sharks had a pretty, very, well, very poor um, season never got anywhere even close to to the playoffs but they did have a really good run in in Europe and uh Etzebet was a big part of that then he's beside uh Franco Mustart Mustart as well so that is the Ruby World Cup winning um starting lock combination there as well and you know Etzebet is just one of those generational players right that you know you you, you see all these great players run around and then just a few stick out and that's about it is is in that kind of you know small uh group of players who will be really remembered from this generation i think and Fra- franco mustard he's, he's no slouch himself like he's a really good player but south africa's uh locking stocks are just frighteningly uh you know um uh, full of quality and full of depth as well they could put you know, um, another four or five guys in there beside Etzebet and they'd all do an amazing job for them. Then the back row, then you got Sia Khaleesi, currently playing in France with Racing 92. Uh, Peter Steph to Toy. Um, interestingly, he, he, when he, when he went to the World Cup or the World Cup warm ups and into the few first few games of the World Cup as well, he was very obviously unfit. And but they got him up to speed, and I wonder now, you know, um, what's happened to him this season? Has his fitness um, stayed at the same level or not? We're definitely going to see in this game. I think probably probably is because he through that World Cup, he really himself and Vermeulen in that back row um, really worked themselves back into fitness and back into into form as well. And the two of them were were brilliant. Um, you know, in, in that World Cup final as well. Quagga Smith there alongside him um, at eight. So he was on the bench in the Rugby World Cup and came on for Vermeulen in that one. And, you know, he's going to be a huge threat at the breakdown. Um, and you've also got like the likes of, uh, of in Che, like uh, Oxen Che likes to get over the ball as well. Um, and actually, their, their whole front row um, likes to have a bit of a poach too. So Ireland, you're going to have to try and look after the ball as best as they can. But Quagga Smith would be, I think, the main, main poaching threat from them. The guy just has that low center of gravity, uh, you know, and, and just that uh, immense strength as well. It's very hard to shift him off the ball. You've, you've got to stop him before he gets in there for the poach. If you don't, then it's, you know, it's going to be a turnover or more, li- more than likely it's going to be a penalty against you. Then the halfbacks then, Faf de Clerc and Andre Pollard. So de Clerc, you know, he's such a brilliant, um, player. You know, there are obviously other nines coming through in South Africa. Grant Williams there on the bench. You've also got, you know, um, the likes of Nahamba as well there and you know they've got plenty of players to choose from but the clerk uh, delivers for them and that's why I think he's got to start in this one and I think it's going to be important as well f- from him because he, he has that bit of chat about him like he gets under people's skin and I can see a situation where maybe Andrew Porter things aren't going that well for him in the scrum 
and then the clerk gets under his skin and maybe, you know, uh, gets him to do something silly. He gets off with a yellow card or, or just gives away a penalty where there was no need to give away a penalty. You can certainly see uh, that kind of scenario happening uh, with the way that the clerk does that. Um, then Andre Pollard, you know, uh, obviously Manny LeBoc was the starting 10 in the Rugby, Rugby World Cup, not in the final for the Rugby World Cup. I mean, he looked like he was the guy they were going to go with. And, you know, whatever happens with LeBoc, like all through the season, he is an amazing kicker off the tee. And then it comes to like an important game and suddenly his kicking goes out the window for whatever reason. It seems to me the fact that it's happening at that, it's like pressure. It's a mental thing. And, you know, may, maybe if you're him, maybe you're thinking, well, do I need to maybe spend a bit of my, my own hard earned money to get someone to work on that with me? If I'm, if I'm not improving in that aspect of my game, um, I think that would be a benefit to him. But Andre Pollard absolutely laser straight off the tee and you know um you, you can't see if ireland are hoping this guy is going to miss the you know the a kick that's going to seal the victory it's not going to happen the guy's going to nail it uh you're pretty much guaranteed that that's going to happen he's just so good and that distance as well and the fact that it's at loftus you know any anything you know even his own half uh you're you're not safe so ireland have to be so careful about giving away penalties because they can be very easily, you know, three, six, nine, twelve points down, um, just because they've been giving away penalties in in you know kickable zone for this guy, which is you know almost anywhere up to sixty meters, let's say at Loftus. So Ireland got to be so careful, and Pollard will punish every single mistake. Then we got uh, Curtly Arnsa, um from the Bulls, one of the the most informed um, wingers in the URC at the minute. So that guy is just going to tear it up. And uh, you know, <laughs> Ireland they got to they got to um, prevent that ball getting wide because Ireland have a similar problem to Leinster. I think is that there's always space out wide to attack and. You, you can't let the likes of Aronsa and Colby on the other wing as well to get into space out on your wing like that because if they get in behind you, you're not really, you know, you, you're going to be very lucky if you catch them. You know, they've got that evasive running, they've got the pace as well and you're just going to be scrambling and even if you catch that guy, South Africa is so good in the backs and getting that support there that there's going to be somebody there for the offload and then maybe they're in under under the, the, the sticks. So, you know, Ireland um, have have got to be so good under under defence, especially out in those wide channels, preventing that that ball going there. I could honestly, I could see a scenario where maybe one of the the Ireland centres or maybe winger is going to get a yellow card because of that threat that's out wide that they're, they're going for a ball. Uh, not to necessarily intercept it, but to, to block it from going out there and then, you know, either penalty or yellow card probably for them. So that's certainly a threat that I think is there for Ireland during the game. Then the centres, uh, Damien Dielende, um, as I said, he's playing in Saitama, uh, where I, I lived for five years. Well, I lived three of my five years or almost six years uh, in Japan, in, in Saitama. So very uh, fond memories of there. I really want to go back someday as well. Um but that's we'll have to see with that. Uh, and then Jesse Creel as well, uh, also uh, playing in Japan. But these two, a great center combination. And, you know, they have they obviously have the power, you know, and Ireland are, are going to have to be really strong in, in, in the tackle with these two guys because otherwise they're going to suck in defenders. And also they have the offloading game. They have the subtle side of the game as well. They don't just run at bodies they run into space as well and then if they have to then they bring that power and they just keep going so you know uh the fact that there's there's a dual threat in there as well for ireland means that you know you, you can't just decide to, to to double team one guy you're going to leave the other guy free and he's going to make a show of you so um really good center combination for them colby we, we've spoken about as well just the, the guy is just absolutely amazing he's another one of those generational players i think that um he's got that those magic feet that step to beat you all ends up like you know breaking ankles that kind of stuff and you know again can't uh 
you know, given too much space. And even though, like, you look at, like Aaron saying, you look at Colby and think, well, there might be, you know, a chance for Ireland maybe to attack these guys in the air. Both of them are, are, are good in the air as well. So you're not going to get that too much change out of them, you know. Um, you, you're going to have to basically... Um, get your kick chase absolutely dead on and put the maximum amount of pressure on onto them. But then you have, you've got like Willie LaRue there as well, who's so good at covering that backfield. And he's going to be up there competing with you. And if you make a mistake against Willie LaRue, he's so good at that counter counterattack as well. And his reading of the game, he's already decided once, you know, when, when that ball is coming down, whether he, you know, once he catches it, is he going to step you? Has he seen space that he can kick into? Um, is he going to put a crossfield kick in? Uh, the guy just has all his skills there to be able to do that. And, you know, be, being able to come in as well as the second playmaker into the into the line on attack as well is going to be huge for them. He's so solid at the back. There's, I don't think there's going to be any worries for South Africa there at the back under the high ball. Ireland, again, w- will have to get their kicking aim absolutely completely spot on like the you know not just the kicks themselves but also the chasers they've, they've got to arrive at exactly the right time to put that you know maximum pressure on there and make it at least a difficult catch um even if they're not you know competing to to win the ball themselves they, they've got to make it difficult for them because otherwise you're just kicking them free possession and they're so good at counters and kicking and um Again, coming into that line as well and bring other players in into into you know into the play as well. So you know th- that back three for uh, South Africa just looks so good on attack, but the entire team looks amazing as well. Then we look at the bench as well. Something like Malcolm Marks, uh, Rolls Royce of players, be able to bring him off the bench is brilliant. Then you got uh, Gerhard Steenkamp, fantastic season for the Bulls. Vincent Cock has gone so well for the Sharks as well, and you know. As I said, they're going to come on probably with about uh, 35 minutes, 30 minutes or so to go in the game. And they're just going to bring that extra intensity. You know, Ireland would, you know, maybe be looking for a breeder when the reserves come on. It's not going to happen. These guys are just going to keep going full bore. Then you got um, Salman Morat from the Stormers there. Uh, You know, a guy that I I really admire. And again, uh, he's going to come on. And he's going to bring, you know, extra intensity, uh, good in the carry. You got coming on possibly with Snayman around the same time as well. Snayman is just so good off the bench. The guy just attracts defenders to him like a magnet. And then whatever he does, like he's, he's like an eel in terms of being able to get his hands free or like an octopus or whatever, uh, but always gets his hands free to, to pop that offload off. And he makes, he makes huge players look, look like children beside him at times as well. Um, so another huge threat coming off the bench and the game opens up and that guy's coming on and he's able to draw in some defenders. And if he gets the offload away, it's probably a try because you, you're not going to have too many more players left to get the guy who's just received that offload. Then you got uh, Marco Van Staden, um, you know, great season at Leicester as well. And again, he's going to come on. He's going to lift that that back row and just bring extra, you know, uh, pace and intensity to their play as well. And some great carries too out of him. Then Grant Williams, the guy is pace to burn. Like, uh, if Ireland aren't watching, this guy is going to quick tap and he's going to be in uh, for a try. And and Ireland, you know, it'd be one of these ones where. Uh, a little bit embarrassed, so the players are kind of complaining to the referee about it, but it's going to be, well, what can I do? He quick tapped and he ran by all you guys and you weren't ready. So uh, you can absolutely see that happening with him. And and it's not just that. like he, it's, He's not just a one-trick pony. The guy is a really good scrum half as well. So again, uh, you know, Stander's not going to drop too much when, when he replaces Faf de Klerk. And he, he brings a different problem for Ireland um, to... You know, to contend with as well. Faf de Klerk, obviously, probably of the two, has has the better box kicking game. But Williams then brings that um, threat of you know the, the tap, the the snipe, etc. And Ireland have to be so wide to that. And you know, if, if they don't switch over um, as soon as he's re- replaced Faf, they could get you know lull into that thing of you know Faf de Klerk sometimes takes a long time to set up his box kick. 
Ireland would be kind of sitting off, switch off a little bit. Whereas Williams, he snipes and he's through and guys just weren't switched on. I can absolutely see that. Then we've got another player full of talent, a really, you know, um, great, um, player that we're going to see more and more of in the future, I think, for the Springboks. That's, uh, Sasha Feinberg and Gamazulu. Uh, this guy, you know, he can, he, he's one of these players where he can come on, he can slot in in a number of positions in the back line. He can carry well. Um, uh, you know, he, he, he's always looking for his options as well. So it means that he, he's thinking about, can he beat you? But he's also thinking about, is there a pass on? And, um, he, He's one of these players too that if somebody else makes a break, he's there on the shoulder. He runs really good support lines as well. Himself and Williams actually, both of them uh, do that. So again, if South Africa get in behind, um, it's going to be so hard for Ireland to shut them down because of players like this coming on and running those great lines. So fantastic team um from South Africa there. And like there's so many players who could be in this squad as well that uh you know <laughs> would be great players to talk about as well. It's just amazing. Like sometimes in Ireland we talk about how we're building depth, etc. But then we look at, you know, or I look at South Africa and I look at I think about, you know, I've covered so many South African teams in the URC and I think about all of the great players that you know are running around um uh, in you know in, in the URC that aren't in this in this 23 and thinking geez like those guys could come in and they could be be brilliant as well so uh you know in terms of depth obviously south africa ha has ireland beat ireland you know are working their way there but it still feels like another decade at least uh, to get anywhere near that depth and it means that ireland have to build depth at all of their um at all of their provinces not just at you know, Leinster and then Munster beginning to do it, but Ulster and Connacht need to step up their game as well for that. But let's have a look now at the at the Ireland team. So um, again, we're going to start uh, from fullback. So we've got Jamie Osborne there. He's making his debut. He's at fullback. Probably one of the, in terms of Leinster players, um, one of the form backs. Um, spent a lot of the season playing in centre there because, you know, um, Ring Rose um, was out for a good while. So he's playing in there um, alongside Henshaw. He's switched as well. Um, you know, he's moved around the back line a bit. He's popped up on the wing. He's been at full back as well. So um, he's certainly used to it. But having to make your, your debut there, obviously no Keenan because he's he's going for the uh, Olympics in Paris with the sevens. But, you know, we talked about uh, Willie Roo being solid under the high ball. Jamie Osborne, um, he did make a few mistakes um, towards the end of the season in important games um, under the high ball. So he's absolutely going to be tested. He needs to, you know, the first couple of, of takes, um, he needs to get him solid and, and get that confidence going because he is a good player under the high ball, but it's just one of those where um, you're a new player in this environment and if you drop the first ball or the second ball or wherever it is, suddenly that confidence goes a little bit and the opposition smell blood and it can be, you know, a bloodbath for you. Um, so, but with that said, Ireland have to be better in terms of protecting the, the, uh, the guy, um, you know, catching the ball as well. You got to have those, um, you know, it's it's obviously it is a screen like you're not supposed to be screening but everybody does it they're going to have those players screening uh to make it difficult for whoever it is coming whether you know it's uh Kurt Lianza or or Colby or Willie LaRue actually coming back up you know off his own kick or whatever but somebody has to be there uh to to just make his job a little bit easier especially at the start and and just give him hopefully some some easier catches so that he he can work his way into the game if he does the guy is a talent as well to he can obviously counterattack and he he's very good as well it's kind of similar to to LaRue in in the fact that um he can he can bring other players into into the game as well. He's he's a good distributor of the ball. He's also got a really big kick. I think his kick is probably um a little bit longer than James Lowe. And uh we saw when he was playing in the centres for Lencer that um that there were times when he was the go-to player uh, for the clearance kick rather than low. So it's good to have a, a second kicking option there in the back three. Um 
because sometimes Ireland you know, uh, rely a little bit too much on low. And obviously, as a left-footed kicker, it means that the ball is going to go into certain uh, areas of, of, of the field. And the fact that sometimes if some guy catches it and then he's got to shift it to low for him to kick it, it's much better if the guy catches it catching it is Osborne and he's just going to select the kick himself um, so we'll see how he goes there then we've got Calvin Nash you know uh, had a really good season I think for Munster he kind of built his way through through the season had a really good Six Nations as well for Ireland you know, want to see him though uh, getting a ball in those dangerous areas and, and getting himself you know, he's really good at getting involved in the game and coming off his wing looking for work but want to see him as well being out wide getting that ball in space and, and actually delivering in terms of getting over and scoring tries. We know he can do that. We just uh, need to see maybe a little bit more of it uh, in green because Ireland are really up against it uh, in this test series. Then the centres, we have uh, Robbie Henshaw and Bundy Aki. So Bundy Aki, first of all, um, for me, Ireland's best player over the last 12 months. There isn't even a, a conversation about it. The guy won so many player of the match awards through the World Cup and you know on into the Six Nations as well. Uh, so fantastic player uh, and you know we got we're going to rely on him as well um, to give us you know a, a bit of momentum at times too got to get those hard carries he's got to be looking out for as well you know uh, where his offloads are I think when Bundy Aki is aware of the players around him he's so much better as a player sometimes he just puts the head down and he just goes for the maximum yardage and that's not always the best thing especially against this box, t- box team who can isolate you uh, win a penalty turn you over or just make it very messy uh, you know by by making it so that he's kind of in, in, in behind and uh, getting that ball out Ireland have to go back to, to the next player on as well uh, Robbie Henshaw um you know, he's in there at 13. I always feel like, you know, he obviously started as a 13, but I uh, always feel like he, he looks a bit more comfortable at 12 uh, with somebody else inside him. But certainly if I was picking a 12 between these two, it, it's got to be Bundy Aki. So Robbie has to play 13. Uh, I don't think he defends as well as um, as Gary Ringrose in there, but... You know, and he's going to be tested, I think, in this one. So defense is going to be important, but he's also got to bring it in attack too. Uh, James Lowe then on the left wing. You know, he he's going to be uh, in terms of the 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 back three. He's easily the best finisher, and because of that, Ireland would be looking a lot to attack down his wing. But that kind of you know, if, if we don't spread out a little bit, uh, it means that it's going to be easier to kind of isolate him. Uh, but still, um, if he gets a sniff of the try line, he's going to be over. Obviously, um, kicks are going to be very important. He's got to watch, though, I think, uh, with, you know, being at Loftus, that uh, the, the distance on the kicks, you know, himself and Osborne as well, um, that he doesn't overkick it. Because uh, we saw him do that, I think, in the semifinals um, against the Bulls, where, you know, uh, kicks were, were going a little bit further than maybe expected so hopefully the fact that now um he's he's been down there and played there um uh, that that you know he, it's going to be a bit better for him then jack crowley at 10 um you know he's come in there there was a debate last year about who who was the backup to to sexton was it him or was it ross Byrne? uh there's no debate about that anymore uh you know in terms of who's the better of those two jack crowley just said oh Johnny's retiring. Okay, this number ten shirt, that's mine, uh, and the rest of you can can fight over who's on the bench. And uh, it's because he's just been so good, and he has that composure um, at a young age that, that I think is is really special and really really important as well. Uh, he will be obviously put under a lot of pressure, and it's up to the Ireland team really to, to look after him and make sure you know that, that he he can play his own game get him that quick ball um, and that's going to be on to, to Casey as well there at nine. No, James Gibson Park is a huge miss for Ireland. You know, uh, I think next to, to Bunyaki um, was the, kind of the, the other back that was in, in scintillating form in the last year. So he's a big, big loss for Ireland. Craig Casey, um, certainly a, an able deputy, but he probably would have expected, you know, to be fighting with Conor Murray to be on the bench for, for this um, you know, earlier on in the season. So now that he's got a chance there at nine, he's got to deliver. He's got to, you know, 
there are times when he dithers a little bit on the ball. He can't do that in in you know in this because he's going to get smashed or the person that he gives the ball to is going to get smashed. So got to be decisive. Got to get that ball away quickly. You know, and he's got to be able to as well to to notice because the the box are absolutely going to attack um, Ireland at the breakdown early on and try and make a mess, but and try and turn the ball over and make that ball at least make that ball slower. And Casey needs to identify that and needs to call in extra players, you know, when necessary. There's no point in a, you know a guy standing out in a pod for a ball that isn't coming because the opposition are going to win it. He needs to call people in um, and ad- identify early when the box are going after the ball and you know secure that ball and and then get things reorganized and 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 go again from there then uh we got uh Caelan Doris he's had a bit of a mixed season he's had some fantastic games and other games where you know uh he's been very quiet and I think maybe you know having to carry the captaincy for Leinster for much of the season because the two joint captains um were injured for almost the entire season maybe weighed a little bit on him and uh it's going to be good to see him just you know, being allowed to play his natural game. He's going to be hugely important for Ireland in terms of getting that front football. Obviously, the back, the box are going to uh, target him. They're going to try and, you know, smash him early and drive him backwards. So uh, we'll see how well he's going to be able to do. And in order for him to succeed, it means that the other forwards um, need need to do their share as well. You know, it can't be just a case of, okay, we want to get some go forward, give it to Kalen. And then there's two boxes waiting to smash him every time to do it. So they've got to be really, you know, clever about when he gets the ball and putting him in the best position as well to, to, uh, to actually make meters forward. Then Josh van der Fleer, um, over the last year, you know, he's, he's kind of been, you know, in and out of the starting team. He's been on the bench a lot as well. Um, I think he has great impact off the bench, but then it's a case of who do you put in uh, there at seven? Instead of, and if he's on the bench, then uh, you, you, you've you got, you. if he's on the bench, you're probably going to have him and Baird on the bench together. And it means that you're probably going to go for 6-2 uh, split there. But I think Ireland, you know, the fact that they've gone for 5-3 means that Van der Fleer is definitely going to start. Uh, he's, He's not at that level that you know uh, that saw him be world player of the year. He's still a fantastic player, but it, it just feels like you know uh, we're not seeing him hit the heights as much. Uh, but you know, even an average performance from Van der Fleer is still uh, pretty good. But we we need a lot of these players to be at maximum to have any chance against this box team. Then we got Captain Peter Romani. Um, you know the guy. Um, has I think he's been a fantastic captain since he took over for the Six Nations. He was brilliant. Um, you know how much he, he has in the tank in the legs. Um, in terms of how far he's going to go into this game is another thing, though. Um, and then you'd worry when he comes off about the leadership um, on, on the field as well, because I don't think Ireland have another player really to stand up. Uh, to be captain at the moment. We do have the likes of Ryan and stuff that will be coming off the bench, but I'm still unconvinced um, with, with him as a captain at the moment. So Peter Romani, how how long can he play is going to be hugely important for Ireland. Uh, you know, he's uh, one of our big breakdown threats. He is a huge threat in the lineup as well for nicking opposition ball. He is, you know, a uh, solid ball in the lineup when we need it to. Uh, and then his work around the park, you know, the, the guy shouldn't be able to do some of the things that he does. And then obviously, you know, himself and the clerk, uh, get those, those two in the pub, uh, just giving it to each other, uh, would be a sight to see as well. He's another one that loves, loves a bit of back chat, uh, to the opposition and, and sledging as they call it, uh, down under. Then we got Ty Byrne there at five. Um, you know, Ireland's main poaching threat. We've seen teams, uh, you know, marking him out of the game as well. So in order uh, for that not to happen, Ireland need to have other players, um, including backs as well, trying to get in there and poach. And also, you know, um, Byrne needs to pick his moments better for, for when he's actually going to go after the ball. Uh, and then I think he's he's hugely important as well for Ireland in terms of mall defence because I think in terms of mall of mall attacks, South Africa is certainly the better of the two teams um, in terms of getting that mall go forward. So Byrne, uh, he he's 
so good at getting in there, getting right in the middle and disrupting opposition malls. And we need him at his best uh, for that as well. Joe McCarthy then uh, been a huge revelation for Ireland since he has kind of, you know, uh, stepped up into the starting team. And he brings a physicality that we don't really get from our other locks. Um, you know, <laughs> South Africa, though, have that in spades as well. So he's really, again, going to have to to bring his A game for this one. But, you know, uh, he's a young guy. Uh, but he has no fear in him as well. So uh, I think he, he's going to go well in this. Uh, then we come to the front row. Tag Furlong, uh, you know, he, he's beginning to get back to the level where he was. Last season for me, um, I, I don't think last last year and last season, I don't think he should have been the starting uh uh, tight head for Ireland. I think it should have been Finley, Finley Bealham, um, through the World Cup as well, because Furlong was just off, he was off the pace and he, you know, he had a break there to start the season, you know, un- in un- unfortunate circumstances, having lost his dad. And then he came back and he seemed to be rejuvenated. And we've seen now the little, um, you know, extras that he puts in his game. And you know, that's when he's going well in his bread and butter stuff as well. Um, still, He's, you know, had trouble in that Leinster scrum because he's in there, um, you know, and he's he's basically trying to lock it to scrum on his own, as far as I can tell, because Sheehan wouldn't be the best scrummage in the world. Andrew Porter has had, for the last year and a half at least, has had issues um, on the scrumming side that don't seem to be going away. Um, and whether other teams are doing illegal stuff or not, uh, you know, everybody does illegal stuff. I'm sure Ireland do, does plenty of it too. Um, you've got to adapt to it and he doesn't seem to be able to adapt to it. And that's putting huge pressure on Furlong. But I think Furlong is getting back to that level now. But I still want to see Bealham getting decent minutes. Um, you know, Bealham is too good of a player just to be kind of warming a seat um, for, for 80 minutes. So we have to see how that goes. Dan Sheen then, um, you know, He's, he's got to get his, um, his line outs right. You know, we've seen him being a bit wayward, um, in that. And, and obviously it's the whole, um, line out. It's not just him, but it seems to be more prevalent when, when he's there. So he's got to hit his man in the first few. Um, talked about how, um, South Africa have probably the better mall attack than Ireland, but Dan Sheen almost is like an equalizer because I don't think that Ireland's mall attack is that great, but when he's on the back, um, they still have a chance to score a try because he's so good at picking his moment to peel off. And he, he, he has that ability then a little bit of a step, a little bit of evasion, and then the power as well to force his way over. And he makes Ireland's mall attack look a lot better than, than it actually is. Um, when, when he's on the pitch, then we've got Andrew Porter, as I said, struggles in the scrum. Um, and he's got to be able to adapt on the field. And, you know, uh, the other thing as well is that when Porter is doing badly in the scrum, his all-around game suffers as well. When he's going well in the scrum, he's he's an extra threat at the breakdown for Ireland. He's in there. He wants to get over the ball. He wants to win, you know, back possession or win penalties for his team. But when things aren't going too well in the scrum, I think he spends a little bit too much time maybe focusing on that and complaining about this, that and the other. Uh, where, you know, uh, as I said, when things are actually good for him, uh, he, he contributes so much more around the park. So how he goes in the scrum is going to be hugely important for Ireland as well. Then onto the bench, uh, Ronan Kelleher. For me, and Sheen is, is obviously the better of the hookers, but uh, I like to see Kelleher having a start and because Sheen has so much impact off the bench. We're going to see why you do it this way around. But I hope that Kelleher isn't coming on to try and, uh, you know, shore up the line out at some point. Keen Healy there. Then, uh, you know, like the Swiss Army knife of a front row, really, uh, can cover all the, pos- the positions. Hope he gets some decent minutes um, in this game. And then Finley Bealham, um, for me, over the last two years, probably Ireland's best tight head um in terms of ceiling obviously furlong is the better of the two but Bealham, um i think when he comes on he's going to have a decent impact james ryan um he does so much unseen work at the breakdown it's going to be important as well for ireland in terms of protecting that ball late on in the game if it is a tight game um i'm worried though if he comes on and he takes over as the captaincy because again i'm not too sure about him as a captain of the team ryan bird um 
he's worked so much more in terms of you know doing the basics uh of, of his game at six but he has that dynamism as well and, and coming on late on the game when maybe there's some tired legs out there and a bit more space uh certainly makes uh sense for him Connor murray reinvented himself over the last year uh, if it had been this time last year and seeing him on the bench it would have been hugely worried about him coming on and slowing down our ball too much uh but he he seems to have fixed that part of his game and you know he, he's going to come on and, and certainly bring a lot of experience to the party kieran frawley there uh, you know, he's he's going to be uh, covering 10 from the bench and also um, you would expect fullback too. And, you know, uh, I'm glad that he's on there because we need to kind of, for me, I think Ireland needs, Ireland and Leinster need to move on from the Byrne brothers uh, and having someone like Frawley involved here is, is a good sign. Gary Ringrose, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how many minutes he gets because we saw there... It basically felt like the entire second half of the season for Leinster. We were told Gary Ringrose, um, it looks like he might be involved next week. And then it was next week and next week and next week and next week. And then finally it was like the, the, the semi-final, um, against the Bulls where he, like, uh, you know, that was the last one of the season for him. Um, but he, he missed so much, um, rugby that I'm, you know, I'm wondering, how he's going to do when he comes on. Uh, hopefully he's, it's not one of these ones where he comes on and then somebody has to come back on to replace him because uh, he has to go off injured. Um, but if he does come on, you know, uh, again, with that little bit of extra space with hard legs, I think he could be um, someone who could be a bit of a game changer for for Ireland. Uh, there's, there's definitely, for both teams, there's a lot of players who can come on and potentially win win the game for their team. Uh, and if we talk about the, the game, you know, in its totality, favourites for me, absolutely South Africa. Like, the world champions playing at home, they're playing at Loftus as well, which is going to make a huge difference um, with the, the altitude there as well. And, yeah, for me, <laughs> the only team I can pick to win this is South Africa because, uh, you know, who who's back... Who's, honestly backing against South Africa other than trolls from off the ball or something like that uh, you know two fantastic teams um, you know but Ireland um, it's just for for club uh, you know nobody has really um, you know been absolutely out of this world amazing this year you know a lot of guys have been really good um, but it's that extra level right uh, to get there and so I feel like all of these players for Ireland have to take a step up um, into this just to compete against South Africa. I'm hoping it's going to be a tight game that Ireland can, can you know, I'm not going to say keep the score down because that, it, you know, and I don't want to disrespect, disrespect my own team. I, I hope Ireland can keep it a tight game. In the World Cup, Ireland, got, you know, they got out there. They were hugely intense at the start and they won the collisions and they've got to be able to do this against South Africa. This Ireland team are not a team who can you know, fall behind early and then and then come back into a game and and overtake the opposition. They're they're like a front runner, right? They're they're a team that likes to get out ahead of the opposition. And then if when the opposition then it, you know you get to the last kind of 20, 30 minutes of the game, um, then Ireland look for opportunities to to pick them off and try and seal the deal. Um, they're they're not really built as a team in terms of going behind early on and then being able to not just work their way back into the game, but you've got to work your way back in the game and get ahead of the opposition. There's no point coming back between, you know, three points behind in the opposition score in order to try and you're 10 points or to score a penalty and you're six or whatever and you have to try and go again. You know, I think Ireland have the ability to close a gap. It's whether they have the ability to um, not just close it, but, you know, uh, go beyond the opposition and, and retake a lead or take a lead from behind uh, late in the game. We don't see too much of them doing that. And the, you know, the world champion box at Loftus is not where you want to, to have to try and do that either. Uh, for the spring box, I think if they get a, a lead early on, um, you know, and then they, they, you know, they manage that period round about, you know, Ireland, um, kind of similar to Leinster, are really good either side of the half when, when teams are switched off. 
um, are very good at taking opportunities. If South Africa can manage that, and if we go into the last kind of you know 15, 20 minutes ahead, I think uh, it's going to be theirs to win. As I said, and you know, I hope Ireland can, can make it. A, a, a tight game um i think it's going to be wherever it is it's going to be uh you know a very um enjoyable game to watch even if an ireland fan of my team loses which i'm expecting them to do um uh, because it's still two of the best teams in the world i'm not sure whether i think south africa are the best team in the world at the minute um i'm not sure ireland are number two i think you know on the rankings maybe they are um but you know there are other teams certainly would put their hand up um, to to contest that as well. So you know Ireland are definitely going to have to um, you know reach levels that we haven't really seen from this year through the Six Nations. Um, even though the, you know they retained their Six Nations title, um, there were there were there wasn't any kind of hugely amazing standout performance. Just a lot of really good performances, and you know really good is not all that bad. I just feel like more is needed against uh, what is a fantastic South Africa team. So my prediction again is South Africa to win, but in a tight game. Um, obviously, I'm going to be cheering for an Ireland win uh, on that one, but whatever it is, I hope it's an enjoyable game. I hope to you know uh, be able to chat with, with some box um after the game hopefully not too many trolls because uh they're they're just kind of boring at this stage as well and i know uh, there are so many um actual stand-up decent uh box supporters out there as well i've interacted with many of you in the comments through and uh, you know th- world cups urc champions cup wherever uh you guys th- the vast majority of you guys have been so respectful, so knowledgeable as well. And I'm looking forward to that part, uh, you know, on, on Saturday as well, or, or probably Sunday, uh, because my review will go up kind of Saturday evening. Uh, but let me know um, what you think in terms of who you think is going to win. Is it going to be like the box just absolutely destroying Ireland? Or do you think that Ireland actually have a chance? <laughs>